Congratulations on earning your bow. Today, we're gonna to learn about the parts of the bow, some basic care, and how to hold the bow as a longer object than the pencil or frog. After that, we'll place the bow on the strings and make our first arco sounds. The bow has a frog, the square part at this end, and a tip, the pointy part, at this end. It also has a stick and hair, which should never be touched by human hands. The reason why we do not touch the hair is because your hands have bacteria and oils and dirt on them all the time. And these materials are not good for the hair of the bow, especially because after rosining, the bow hair can be sticky and you don't want that sticky sap on your fingers either. The stick of the bow has a slight curve to it. This curve is important and it has a name. It's called the camber. Say camber. Good, say it again, camber. Say it like you mean it. Whisper it, camber. <laughs> yes, this curved area of the stick is the camber. Next, we'll talk about care of the bow. When you take the bow out of its case, you'll find that the hairs are loose. The hair should also be relatively close to the camber of the stick, especially in the middle. In order to use the bow on the instrument, we need to tighten it. In order to tighten the bow, you go to the screw at the bottom of the frog and twist to the right. You will twist it tighter and tighter until the bow slightly smiles. If I back it up, you can see that the middle of the bow is lower than the edges of the bow. It's smiling. <laughs> you can also check by looking at the distance between the hair and the frog. and the hair in the tip. You can see how it gets closer in the middle, but is still separated, and then gets farther away at the ends. The important thing is that your bow smiles. Next, we need to discuss rosining the bow. Rosin is a substance that is made of pine, resin, and sap. That will make it very sticky, which is a good thing because that stickiness is what helps the friction to pull the string back and forth underneath the hair and make that beautiful string instrument sound. So we need to use this sticky rosin very carefully. Rosin can come in blocks or in packs like this. Usually bass rosin is circular. A violinist, violist, or cellist, for example, would never use bass rosin because bass rosin is extra sticky and that would damage the hair of your bow and possibly the strings on your instrument, whereas it's perfect for the long, thick bass strings. The block rosin is for violinists, violists, and cellists. Sometimes block rosin comes with a cap and that's simply to protect the rosin. If you don't care for your rosin well, you can see over time it will uh, break and chip and become less useful to you. So it's important that you protect your rosin from these accidents by making sure it doesn't fall on the ground, by making sure you're not hitting it or scratching it with an implement, and you want your rosin to be smooth like a stone rather than cracked. So take good care of your rosin. Next I'm gonna show you how to rosin your bow. So you take your block of rosin, holding it on the wood, not on the stone, and you take your bow. Place the bow on top of the block. Be careful, you have a lot of bow arm now. Make sure you're not hitting the person next to you. So you take your bow, you put it on top of your rosin block, and I like to call it the rule of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
That's all it takes. A little brush at the bottom, spreading it through the bow. A little brush at the top, spreading it through the bow. And one more brush at the bottom, spreading it through the bow. If you find at any time that you have too much rosin on your bow and you'd be able to see the white powder and when you played your instrument you'd be able to see the powder fall onto your instrument, you want to clean that off. In order to clean off rosin, make sure you're far away from anyone else. You may excuse yourself to the back of the room, for example, and then you just carefully flick the rosin off the bow to remove any excess powder. When you're finished rosining your bow, the best thing to do is put that cap back on and put it safely in the pouch of your case or cellists that are using school instruments to put that rosin back at the student station in the basket, not to leave it on a stand where it could fall and break. We want to take good care of our rosin. Next, we're going to talk about holding the bow. Hold the bow with your left hand so that you have plenty of room at the frog to drape your right hand over. We're going to drape the intermediate phalanges over the stick and give them a little wiggle. You can line up the intermediate phalanges by making a window between the middle finger and ring finger and tapping the ferrule. Next, our thumb comes in like a mountain and kisses the lip of the frog. Take your mountain thumb off the lip of the frog and once again, like a mountain, your thumb comes in and kisses the lip of the frog. As you can see, my thumbnail is rubbing against the stick of the bow and the very tip of my thumb is touching the lip of the frog. I still have my window between ring finger and middle finger on the ferrule. Cellists and bassists, this is a great bow hold. If you still have a thumb like a mountain, tap it and feel the weight of the bow on the front of your hand. If it's too heavy and your hand collapses, you can help your hand and your bow hold by putting Pinky on top. Remember, your Pinky, he is a strong man. Tap your window. Or if you prefer, tap your window. If you have a thumb like a mountain, make the noise. Tap your window one more time. Now, violinists and violists, Grab the tip again with your other hand so that you can tilt the bow until Pinky rests on top. Yay! Pinky's excited. And you can tap. You no longer have a window on the ferrule. Your middle finger is touching the ferrule. And your ring finger should be close to the dot. Again, you can see my fingers have windows. Go ahead and let go of the tip so you can feel the weight in the bow. And let's tap our ring and middle fingers. Good job. All right, let's see if we can set it up faster now. Hold the tip of the bow so the frog lingers in front of your face. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your right hand, shake your right hand. Go ahead and let it hang and relax. Put the intermediate phalanges that are naturally curved on the stick of the bow. You can line up the middle finger and ring finger on either side of the ferrule and tap that window. 
Please relax your thumb and let it hang to the side of your bow. Next, we're going to make our thumb into a mountain and kiss the lip of the frog. Remember, your thumbnail is going to touch the stick and the tip of your thumb is going to kiss the lip. Cellists and bassists, make sure you have finger windows and you can tap ring finger and middle finger. Let's go ahead and release the left hand and feel the weight of the bow. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> and cellists, if you're still struggling with this and the bow is too heavy for your hand and your hand starts to do this, what you can do is just rest pinky on top for a little extra support. Eventually, we'll relax that pinky down, but for the first couple of weeks, if you need that extra support, that's okay. Violinists and violists, go ahead and grab the tip again. We're going to move the bow, not the hand, until Pinky can rest on top. Pinky's really excited. Yee! Middle finger rests on the ferrule. Ring finger rests on the dot. Go ahead and release the tip of the bow so that you can feel the weight of the whole bow in the bow hand. Now I'd like to see if you can do the bow hold with the bow all by yourself. I'll give you 10 seconds to establish the bow hold and then you can show it to your partner on the left and the right and have them check to see if you have finger windows, your pinky in the right place, and a curved mountain thumb kissing the lip of the frog. Remember, when you have a bow, you have twice as much arm. So be careful with the space you occupy. If you've accidentally hit someone around you at this point, just be more conscious of the space around you and your longer arm. Now that we can hold the bow, it's important for us to know where to place it on our instruments. Your instruments have a bridge, the thin piece of wood that holds up the strings, and a fingerboard, the black edge that you use to anchor your thumb while plucking. The bow goes in between the bridge and the fingerboard. We set it near the frog on the strings so that the bow makes a straight line along the bridge and along the fingerboard. You can also set it at the tip. You move very close to the tip. You can also set the bow straight on the strings, making sure that the bow is aligned with the bridge and the fingerboard. Let's do that together. You have 10 seconds to get your bow hold ready to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Place the frog of the bow on the strings and see if you can make the stick, the hair, the bridge, and the fingerboard straight. Here's an example of crooked. And here's an example of crooked. But this is straight. Let's see if we can put the tip of our bow on the strings as well. When you're putting the tip of the bow down, you'll notice you need to balance the weight of the bow with your thumb. See if you can get the bow to be straight. Here's an example of crooked, and here's an example of crooked. That's pretty hard to do. <laughs> Make sure that the bow is straight on the instrument following the lines of the bridge and the fingerboard. These are our basic starting points for bowing. We'll either start at the frog or at the tip. Let's do frog and tip taps together. It's going to look like this. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, 
three, four. Let's do it together. Get ready to put your frog down in a straight line on the strings. Ready, go. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, get it straight, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Pause. When you're doing this exercise, you'll get much better quicker if you really strive to keep the bow close to the strings and you strive to keep the bow in between the bridge and the fingerboard even when you're not putting the bow down, that's going to help train your brain to put the bow in the right place as you bow the strings later. So take your time getting from the frog to the tip and make sure you're trying to follow that space in between the fingerboard and the bridge. Let's go again. Get ready to place at the frog. Ready, place. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, Four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip. Here's what that set point looks like on the cello or bass. Get ready to play again. Set your bow at the frog. One, two, ready, go. Frog. Two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, two, three, four. Frog, two, three, four. Tip, and ready, stop. All right, it's time. Let's make sure we're ready to bow by getting our bow hold back in a really good solid hold. So go ahead and hold the stick with your left hand. Make sure that the frog is in front of your face and shake out that right hand. Shake, 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 shake. Relax your fingers, relax your fingers. Go ahead and place the intermediate phalanges on the stick of the bow. You can tap your window between middle finger and ring finger. Then thumb comes in like a mountain and kisses the lip of the frog. Go ahead, cellos and basses, and let go of the stick. If you need to, cellos and basses, because of that extra weight, you can add pinky on top. Violinists and violists, we are going to tilt the bow until pinky can rest on top. And next, violinists and violists, you can tap the middle finger on the metal part of the bow, the ferrule, and you can tap your ring finger on the dot on the frog. Make sure your fingers have windows and you're ready to bow. Let's plant on the D string on our frog point. Go ahead and look down at your instrument and make sure that the bow hair is resting only on the D string. You don't need to pull or make noise at this point. Try and do this silently. Make sure the bow is resting just on the D string. And then we're going to take a nice long down stroke or down bow. I'm going to pull the bow to the right and extend my arm. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and try. And let's discuss what happened. As you pulled down, the string made a beautiful sound. That's great. That means you have enough rosin on your bow and that you added the right amount of pressure and speed. You'll have to be string scientists and experiment with pressure and speed in order to get a beautiful sound on your instrument. Let's try that downstroke again. Ready, go. As I got closer to the bottom, my wrist bent a lot. 
okay? And if you're playing cello or bass, your wrist is also going to bend a lot by the side to keep that bow straight across. You wanna make sure that you're following the bridge and the fingerboard and playing straight across, just like when we did our bow sets. You wanna keep that straight, okay? Last time for the downstroke. Set at the frog on the D string only. Ready, pull. Great. Now let's do an upstroke. Find the A string with the tip of the bow. Just the A string, you don't need to make noise, just the A string. And get ready to push. Violinists and violists, you'll be pushing toward the ceiling. And cellists and bassists, you'll be pushing to your left. And we're going to, as you saw, we're going to bend our wrists to keep that bow straight. Almost like you're gonna bump your nose with your wrist. So let's go up bow, tip of the bow on the A string. Ready, go. Excellent. Plant at the tip again. And this time, watch the hair of the bow and make sure it's not moving around in between the bridge and the fingerboard. Watch the hair. Ready, go. Let me show you a better angle so you can see how straight my bow is being. Tip of the bow on the A string again. Watch me this time, don't play along, just watch. I'm getting a consistent sound from tip to frog because I'm staying in the same place on that same point in the string. Make that your goal this time. Tip of the bow on the A string. Bend that wrist to keep the bow straight. Ready, set, go. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Now that we have the downstroke from the frog to the right and the upstroke from the tip to the left, we're going to do the back and forth down and upstroke. In order to do that, we need to plant at the frog. Please watch first and then we'll do it together. I'm going to plant my frog on the D string. And I'm gonna go down for two counts and up for two counts. It looks and sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. Get your bow back on the instrument. Check your windows, check your finger windows, check your mountain thumb, make sure the nail is touching the stick and the tip of your thumb is kissing the lip of the frog. Go ahead and tap your pinky, everyone. Wherever it is, tap your pinky. We're on the D string. Make sure your bow's only touching the D string. We're gonna go down and up. One, two, ready, go. Again, and ready, go. Keep it straight, and ready, go. Ready, go. Now let's find the A string. It's a new angle. When you move the bow to a different string, you'll notice that your whole arm is involved. So the elbow is actually gonna help you determine which plane you're going to pull or push on. If I drop my elbow violins and violas just a little bit, that helps me to get to the A string. Same thing, basses. If I drop my elbow just a little bit, that helps me to get to that open A string. And cellists, if I lift my elbow just a little bit, that's going to help me get to that highest A string. So make sure your elbow is dictating the level of your string. Go ahead and plant on the A string at the frog. We're going to do a down stroke and up stroke. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. Keep it straight and ready, go. Last time, ready, go. And go 
go to resting position. Now your resting position has an instrument and a bow. Cellist and bassist, you'll simply place the bow on your knee. Same thing violins and violas, you'll place the bow on your knee and your instrument on your knee. Great job starting with the bow today. I'm very proud of you for earning them. Make sure you treat them with the reverence they deserve. Bows are not toys. They are instruments for our instruments. It's really important that you care for your bow well and that you practice being very mindful with every movement because remember, in order to go on to 6th grade orchestra, you have to have the bow hold perfectly. Now that we're done playing with the bow, we need to loosen it before we put it away so that it will rest in our case and be protected. That's part of the care of the bow. So at this point, you're going to find the screw at the end of the frog again, and you're going to loosen by going to the left. You'll see the bow loosen, especially in the middle of the bow, because the hair will start to get really close to the stick and then it'll get fuzzy, okay? So once the hair is a little bit loose, you can go ahead and slide it back in the case and click that little arm so that it holds the bow in place. Cellists and bassists, we always hang the bow by the frog because if we hang the bow by the tip, it starts to pull on the hair, which isn't good. So we want to hang it in that little U shape. Once you've loosened it, you can hang it up. And violins, once you've loosened your bow, you can put it back in your case. Wonderful job with the bow. Congratulations.